Welcome to another episode of Business Talk here on Business Tech. Today, we're joined by Shamit Maharaj, who is Executive Data Networks at BCX. Now, Shamit is a leading expert in the field of data networks and autonomous networks and has over a decade experience in the industry. Today, we're going to be discussing the latest advancements and trends in data and autonomous networks and how they're really shaping the future of both technology and business. So without further ado, let's get started. Amit, great to have you on the show. Well, firstly, what is an autonomous network? Network. I think there's a lot of talk right now about AI and doing things robotically and autonomously. What is an autonomous network? Uh, good day, Michael, and thanks for having me. Um, an autonomous network is uh, it's a network that runs with minimal to no human interaction. Uh, you know, it's able to configure, uh, monitor, and maintain itself in a very independent state. So uh, given that, well, I mean, what would be some of the characteristics of uh, uh, an autonomous network in the African business landscape? Yeah, Michael, I think that's a great question. You know, from, a, from an African business landscape perspective, some of the key characteristics include the uh, zero touch provisioning, um, especially in the hard to reach geographic locations. Um, you know, it also has the ability to, to scale uh, and is fully application aware, uh, delivering an improved user experience across the entire landscape. So, I mean, if you look at that, uh, basically what you're trying to do is uh, give best of breed, even for those um, uh, network um, uh, solutions that, you know, at a low end of the business spectrum, you might not feel that uh, you'd be open to such cutting edge network technology. What do you see as the key benefit here of autonomous networking? Michael, I think, uh, you know, the, uh, the autonomous network can offer a path uh, to IT and business uh, you know, business leaders, it creates an alignment to simplify, you know, processes in a very consistent and scalable way, um, which is needed for applications delivered through the cloud. Um, it can enable operation, operational efficiencies, uh, and it helps our IT leaders and their teams to deliver an application, application experience that improves the employee's productivity as well as the customer experience. And I think that's the key element. You know, how do we provide more value to the customer? Um, you know, the ultimate benefit as well um, is the cost savings across the value chain. And 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 whilst using this, uh, you know, whilst we we be aiming for um, the, the value of the cost saving, we're also looking at how do we best utilize the technology as a revenue growth enabler. And, you know, we're living in a commodity market right now. It's difficult to 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 provide um, you know um, uh, value, and and we're looking at the technology to be that enabler to to make us a differentiator in the market. Yeah, and I think boards increasingly are asking. From an operational perspective, uh, their management teams to do more with less in an environment where inflation is eating away at uh, almost every part of the business. If you look at these from a capability perspective, what are some of the capabilities, the, the tangibles that autonomous networking enables? Michael, that's a great question. And, and there's many, many capabilities. Uh, I'll touch on a few, um, you know, high level ones. Um, if we look at the, um, the medical fraternity and, and, you know, using the tech, to connect doctors to patients who are in remote areas, allowing the patient to, you know, populate their diagnosis, um, you know, onto a platform, and then using the technology and the networks to connect the right skilled resource to support that uh, the patient very, very quickly. So it's immediate support to patients. Um, another good use case we've seen, you know, coming out of the um, the recent COVID pandemic, where you know the tracking and tracing was 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 a very unique feature. Okay, um, utilizing IP cameras, you know, on the streets can definitely be used as an enabler as well for uh, initiatives like the track and trace. Uh, you know, in looking at South Africa today, our crime levels are quite high in our country, mm -hmm. and, and using the technology, the the IP cameras on the streets to be an enabler to help us fight crime and and and, and to provide more support to an overstretched um, you know police force. Um, you know, from a consumer perspective, Michael, what we've also seen a really great use case is allowing the consumer to procure goods and services that are not necessarily in our shops right now. So it's almost taking a catalog, connecting it to a global village and enabling the user to then, uh, you know, be in a position to secure uh, the goods that they're looking for in a very 
in a very uh, efficient manner. And it enables getting a product from, from the shelf to the consumer very quickly, even though it doesn't necessarily reside in your specific shop. You know, it allows you to then yeah. identify where does the product exist and how quickly can you um, ensure it is delivered you know, to the consumer. Um, in, in terms of the manufacturing sector, and this is a key for sector because it drives our economy, you know, uh, the autonomous networks is becoming very key in driving the next level of robotics. And we believe there's, there will be a lo lots of value downstream. Um, you know, a more simpler use case, which, which adds value in, in, in society, is, you know, using, making use of facial recognition. Okay, uh, in places like workplaces, in schools, um, and, and and allowing the technology to almost perform the function of a security agent, uh, you know, monitoring or policing uh, access control, and the technology is available to best support, um, you know, that requirement. Yeah, it's, interestingly, I recently checked into an Airbnb in Cape Town ahead of the mining in Daba and was asked to submit a selfie beforehand so that they could capture my facial data. And uh, it was an automated process. I got to the front door, it scanned my face, it recognized who I was and let me in. And then I had to go and fiddle with the key box. That's another story. But, you know, it, it shows you that it's quite different to what I think. And I would um, be falling into that category as well. Some people make a mistake about when they hear autonomous networks, they might think, well, it's just automated. It just does things that uh, you can pre-program. But it sounds a lot smarter than that. So how would you say they differ, um, automated networks from autonomous networks? And why should businesses consider autonomous networks? Michael, that's a great question. Thanks. Um, and, and, you know, automated systems have existed for a long time, right? Um, you know, the, the automated systems have restrictions, um, you know, in the tasks they perform and the actions and decisions are always predefined. OK, uh, from an autonomous network perspective, uh, this is a network that manages itself because it's constantly learning. It's constantly adapting to the environment, making use of artificial intelligence, making use of machine learning. Um, and this is reducing the human dependency as well. And what does this, you know, this, this then leads to faster, error-free processing. Um, and, and, and it allows businesses to, to, to make more informed decisions quickly, all right? Um, what we've seen that, you know, businesses can consider autonomous networks, not just to reduce the, the human interaction or to remove workforce, but to use this as an enabler to take the skilled workforce they have and use them as enablers to create more revenues, yeah? So let the tech uh, be the enabler to support the human, and this is where we see great value. And this is the main differentiator because it's not, uh, you know, it's not processing an, an input to get a specific output. It's it's using the tools, using the technology, the, the machine learning to drive an outcome, which adds the value that uh, consumers want to see today. Are we ready for this here in Africa? Because it sounds like a technology that requires a lot of the background infrastructure to be in place to enable the power of autonomous networks to really be unleashed yet here we sit and we've got load shedding for you know uh, however many hours a day depending on where you are in the country are we ready to adopt these networks michael absolutely yes you know i believe africa is definitely open for business right um, from a technology stack perspective, we've got excellent cable connectivity coming into our country, both on the East Coast and the West Coast of Africa. Um, we, over the last few years, we've had uh, the, the major cloud providers, um, you know, setting up their shops in, in Africa. Uh, we have really good internet, really good peering points, and we have mature networks, you know, across various sectors uh, in the South African landscape. Um, you know, from a skills perspective, I believe South Africa does have the skill sets right now as well. Um, resources who are skilled in machine learning, artificial intelligence. But more importantly, Michael, I believe that there's a demand, there's a customer demand that will drive the adoption of these networks. And that's the key thing, you know, businesses and, and providers in, in Africa right now, uh, they all are trying to provide value in a highly commoditized market. And, you know, with the customer demand in the sector, um, we believe, uh, you know, Africa, the African content is ready. Continent yeah. is ready. The more you use uh, that little facial recognition uh, example that I used earlier, the more as a consumer, you're going to start expecting that from all of your service providers. So that really is going to be the market 
driving that demand from a consumer perspective. So uh, the final question then is clearly, um, where do businesses start? How do they go about taking the first step on this journey of autonomous networks and finding the right IT service provider? Yeah, Michael, that's that's an excellent question. And, and you're right. You know, selecting the right partner is absolutely paramount. Um, you know, businesses need to consider a partner who's willing to invest the time um, and, and to go on this journey with the customer to first understand what is the customer's business about? You know, where do they want to derive the most value uh, from this investment? And then, you know, putting together the building blocks, okay, with the machine learning and artificial intelligence bundled in uh, and monitoring it for a period of time, because it's important to uh, to monitor the actual result, you know, being, being achieved by the technology to ensure that the value being derived is of maximum value to the or benefit to the to the consumer and um you know michael we believe this is not a um you know it's not a quick fix this is a journey that a, uh, that a provider will take with their customers and um you know th there has to be an investment from both sides to ensure uh, that yeah. this is successful yeah and that's it you know start with that that outcome that problem potentially you might want to solve in mind or that customer you want to delight and then build it out from there with that partner well that certainly concludes today's uh, episode of business talk and business tech i'd like to thank uh, shamit maharaj for joining us today and sharing those insights on data networks and autonomous networks it's been a fascinating discussion i hope you've learned as much as i did uh, and don't forget to tune in next week for another exciting episode of business talk on business tech thanks for tuning in